a critical review of Future Sight, the long awaited upgrade and improvements to Puka Trade. Future Sight, a massive slew of new features and upgrades to the popular trading site Puka Trade, was both funded by and promised to the MTG community. Now, over 17 months later, Future Sight has at last been implemented. This video will critically examine and explore this upgrade, which areas have been a success which areas have been a failure, and to what extent. But first, a very important note about this video. This video is not sponsored by Puka Trade. However, I would like to disclose that I was sponsored one time by Puka Trade a little less than two years ago. The video that I produced for them was not a review of Puka Trade per se, but instead was more of an instructional video explaining the service and how to use it. And as disclosed in that video, I received a one time payment from Puka Trade for producing this video, and I have not worked with them, promoted them, or received payment from them since. I do not feel that my previous sponsored video by Puka Trade will affect this review, but I did feel it was important to mention this at the start of the review. Now, this is not a video arguing whether or not what Puka Trade seeks to provide is a good or bad service. This is a video examining how well it performs that service since the now month old Future Sight update. In other words, I am examining how well Puka Trade works since this major update, not whether or not Puka Trade might be right for you. Let's begin with bugs. Bugs are a given with most software, and it is understandable that a major new launcher upgrade will have a fair amount of bugs to be worked out. That being said, FutureSight's host of bugs since its launch on July 21st, 2016, has been both exceptionally high and even at times prohibitive to successful use of the service. While many of the worst of these bugs have now been resolved, it is understandable that the problems that they created, such as cards not being removed from users' want pages, incomplete addresses being displayed for sending cards, a failure to import have lists, and mismatching prices, that all of this essentially made Puka Trade unusable. I cannot and will not simply list all the bugs present and past. To do so would be pointless. Puka Trade is working to solve these bugs, and many that I list may be solved by the time of this video's publication, or will have been solved weeks and months after it. This is not about specific bugs, but about the implementation of software that was so riddled with bugs that now, well over a month after launch, they still plague the site. Interface. A user interface is difficult to review, as it is going to be highly subjective. That being said, I think it is fair to say that the changes to Puka Trade's interface are noticeably for the worse. This isn't just about color scheme. In fact, Puka Trade is promising to add alternative color schemes, starting with a daytime setting that is similar in many respects to the old interface. And that is a good thing. Like many of these things, something that maybe should have been there from the start of Future Sight. But even with daytime color schemes, the templating is difficult to navigate, very non-intuitive, and exceptionally hard to read. I honestly get a headache from the combination of blurred background images overlaid with floating text and frequently changing sizes and layouts. I do not think Puka Trade should have attempted a flashy, overly graphic experience. As a customer, I much more preferred a clear and easy to understand layout, showing me my collection, my wants, my haves, and my cards to be sent. As it is, the future site user interface feels significantly worse. Upgrades. How well did FutureSight deliver on its other added features? Users can now request foreign language cards as well as different card conditions, and these options affect the price accordingly. This appears to have been implemented successfully and is a very welcome addition. In addition to other promised improvements, one of the biggest, in my opinion, is the implementation of being able to trade MTGO digital cards as well as paper. 
This was actually the one feature that always made me think Puka Trade could really offer something no one else could. By adding MTGO digital trade options, people could theoretically have an easy, effective way to convert their digital cards to paper or their paper cards to digital. Well, that ability is now here. But how well does it work? Despite the massive, massive bugs upon implementation, as of the filming of this video, I find the trading of digital MTGO cards to actually be quite clever and easy to use. Hey, I'm being fair in this critique, and I actually am pretty impressed with the MTGO support. I import my trade binder from Magic Online into Puka Trade. And this thankfully now remains imported, and I can immediately see who wants which online cards. I can select to send these cards to as many different players as I want, and here's the part I love. All I have to do is opt to trade with a Puka bot, and then instantaneously drop off all these cards going to all these different sources, and Puka bot just takes all of my cards from me and delivers them where they need to go. I really love the ease and simplicity of this. I make all my trades to all my different people, and Puka bot takes the cards from me and delivers them to their new owners. And then I get my points instantaneously. Credit where credit it is due, that's really good. Now, again, here we go with the bloody interface. Here I imported about a thousand cards that I have for trade, and I really just wish there was a send all option to just send these all out to everyone who's looking for them and distribute them all at once. Instead, I have to manually click through all my items and wait, do I have this many Olivia's? How many of this card do I have? Because there's a lot of people asking. Well, I don't really know because the interface just says who wants it and not how many I have available to trade. Oops, I think I just accidentally committed to sending too many of the same card. I wish there was a way that I could just push one button and send them all out to all applicable wants, or that once I commit to send a card, that card gets taken from my have list so I don't have it available as a trade option or something simple like that. Nonetheless, for a lot of us, this is going to actually be a useful tool to turn our paper cards into digital cards and our digital cards into paper cards, or at least it would be if this last area were not true. Trade issues and economy. The trading economy on Puka Trade is no longer healthy. There have been many possible reasons presented as to why there has been a halt of cards being traded. Some of these reasons that have been suggested are the prevalent use of bots to operate faster than my human hands and mind can, or perhaps it's the prevalence of trade bonuses, bounties for trades, which is offering to manually send additional points for trades, meaning that if you just list off a card that you want and no additional bonus, no one is likely to trade with you. Or maybe it's giant card companies and power sellers using the weight of their buying power to gobble up individual trade folders of all cards of value, and on and on. There are many valid reasons that have been put forward, and I will not presume to know the cause of these problems. But as a longtime Puka Trade customer, I can verify these problems exist, whatever the cause may be. It has become a difficult task to get the trades that you want, or to trade anything less than the most in-demand cards. And whatever the cause of this problem is, no amount of bug fixes, or interface layouts, or even Magic Online compatibility will get Puka Trade working again. In my evaluation, this is not just the problem of a few bugs and growing pains. The service appears nearly unusable. I personally have found it extremely unsatisfactory to use since this massive update, and were a person looking for a trading service, I would not recommend they use Puka Trade as of the filming of this video. The grade on Future Sight. D minus. I hope very much this video has been of some help to you, and I hope very much to review Puka Trade again in the future and be able to report that things have improved significantly.